Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Just yesterday, I put out a video with, with news that Ripple is being sued by another company, this time for something completely unrelated to uh, securities fraud, which was a nice break. It's nice to have a little diversity when you're getting sued a whole bunch because you're a target, because you're a notable company that's kind of changing the way that money moves around the planet. Uh, this time, it was over uh, the name Pay ID. Uh, so take a look at this headline from Cointelegraph, which reads as follows. Ripple faces lawsuit in Australia over pay ID branding. And it has to do with a trademark filed by Ripple uh, for pay ID. And uh, there's another entity that already had a trademark on it, not really so thrilled. And then there were reports also that perhaps it had lapsed and they hadn't uh, sufficiently filed to you know, have uh, ownership, if you will, if that's the right legal term in this particular instance. I'm not a lawyer. But, uh, you know, to actually continue the trademark, because as far as trademark goes, I know this because I have one. You uh, you do have to actually use it and, and refile it's in the United States in order to, to have it. And so, again, with them being in Australia, I don't know what, I, I'm not a lawyer, not not clear on what the international implications are, but we, we do seem to have some news today, and it's limited. I'll just share with you what I have, but it looks like Ripple will be ultimately uh, rebranding. Um, I'm also going to share with you this story, and uh, the way that you withdraw your XRP from exchanges might change a bit in the future, along with any crypto, really. Here's a headline from uh, Crypto Media Outlet U today. Soon most exchanges will withdraw crypto only to, quote, whitelisted wallets. Uh, so says Block Tower Capital CIO. But uh, before we go any further here, if you would please delicately tap that like button, I would definitely appreciate the support. Uh, and you don't have to, but uh, you know I appreciate you stopping by regardless. But if you do, uh, then the YouTube algorithm will take note of that and will promote the video, the video further. And also, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Why the hell not? Don't cost nothing, son. I ain't charging here. All right, so uh, there are multiple sources that that covered this story initially. Now, the first place I saw it was actually on XRPArcade.com. It was XRP community member Leonidas who runs this website. And uh, since then, it's got picked up and actually did learn a few other things. So even though we don't know for sure, because I, I haven't seen a whole ton specifically from Ripple, uh, don't know exactly what these changes are going to look like and when they're going to be implemented, I did learn some new stuff that I want to share with you. Now, I want to make sure we have the table properly set before digging in a little further, so let me just briefly uh, catch everybody up to speed on, on what's going on here uh, with this Cointelegraph piece here. Uh, Ripple's facing a lawsuit from New Payments Platform Australia, uh, NPPA for short, a consortium that includes every significant bank in Australia. Uh, while court documents are yet to have been made public, it is believed that the suit alleges intellectual property infringement concerning the branding of Ripple's pay ID, uh, the payment standard. The lawsuit was reported by technology journalist Rohan Pierce on August 24th, who shared a screenshot indicating that NPP Australia Limited, the operators of Australia's interbank payments network pay ID, had filed a suit with the Federal Court of Australia against Ripple Labs, Inc. And by the way, this didn't come out of the blue, as it turns out. Uh, it looks like there was some talk back and forth for some time before a suit was actually filed. So it seems to me like, I don't, I don't know behind the scenes what the negotiations would look like, if you want to call them that. Uh, but it seems to me like uh, Ripple was trying to figure out the best way to tackle this whole thing. And I think we have, well, I know we have more news on, on the, the route that they're going to, to go. It just has to do with rebranding, which, again, I'll show you in just a moment. But uh, NPPA's payment platform is currently used by more than 60 Australian banks and allows users to send and receive money instantly 24-7 using an email address or phone number. Most cryptocurrency exchanges in the country accept fiat via pay ID, including independent reserve and BTC markets, two members of Ripple's uh, open payments coalition suggesting Ripple may well have been aware of the Australian pay ID brand. And so this is the part that's a little confuzzling to me, if I could just use a made-up board here. I, I don't know why Ripple would willingly uh, take a name that is being used in Australia by this notable consortium and then just, like, hijack. It, it, well, hijack, I don't know if that's too intense a word. Maybe they were just like, uh, well, it was in the running that it, they, they weren't sure what they were going to call this thing. They hadn't announced yet, but then they saw that the trademark filing had lapsed, and then they went for it, and now it's resulting in a lawsuit, potentially. 
Uh, there's a lot going on, and admittedly, there is some uncertainty, so I'm just doing my best to share with you the information that we have here, and I'm taking these reports at, at their word. So operating in good faith, and if any of this gets is a little off, don't worry, I will correct in future videos, but uh, again, this is the best of what we know now. Um, and so you can see even... Um, Actually, let me explain this first. I'm going to be clear. Like, here's an example. This is payid.org. So this is the official website for the Ripple Pay ID here, Ripple-led coalition here, pushing Pay ID. And and so it's supposed to make sending money as easy as send an email. You can see, for example, this is what it might look like. Just like you use the at sign in an email. Here you'd use as an example on the screen right here where I'm circling Alice Dollar Sign Example dot com. And so and so it's supposed to be just that easy. Which would be awesome. So I, I would I would love for for this sort of reality because and that's what Ripple's been pushing for. Obviously, XRP is a huge part of their core business model. But they're talking about the Internet of Value, which really is just the idea of making it as easy to move money around as it is to send an email or a text message today. Now, if you take a look at this piece, this is from Finn Extra here, and this was interesting. So it looks to me. Like, uh, and this could be part of the, re this. I'm sure this would have been taken into consideration. So even if Ripple's legally in the right and they filed properly and NPPA no longer has rights legally and they're just suing anyway, you know, if they no longer have legal rights to the pay ID name, even if uh, it could be the case, and this is a little bit of speculation, speculation's fine as long as it doesn't get into hype Looney Tunes land. I'm cool with reasonable speculation, just talking about potential outcomes, not declaring this is it and acknowledging it is speculation. That's a fine thing to do. But take a look at this. Um, on, yes, this is the part I wanted. On August 3rd, 2020, NPPA instructed its legal counsel to write to each of Ripple's Australian OPC partners, should be Flash FX, which, by the way, utilizes XRP on on-demand liquidity. Uh, you got BTC Markets, also written by, N2, uh, by NPPA. BTC Markets is officially partnered with Ripple as an on-demand liquidity partner. So that's, that's the pool of liquidity that makes all these transactions possible. And also Independent Reserve, uh, to ensure their awareness of NPPA's rights and reputation in the Pay ID brand. So the part that I don't know for sure, and uh, I want to be clear about this, is who actually has the rights to the Pay ID brand. They're claiming they do. Ripple filed. I'm sure that they believe that they were in the right in doing so. Uh, presumably, they thought that they were going down the correct legal avenue. So I don't have a firm answer on that. But you could see how, if Ripple wants to, uh, you know, perhaps take the path of least resistance. Given that, because look, when it comes to international law, there there are systems in place here, but it's still it still can be complex. I mean, I remember taking courses in college on this, and it's basically like, uh, you know, if it, look, for instance, I'm in the United States. It's pretty clear that uh, the United States rule of law here, the way it's, it's written up, like I am to follow that. I'm subject to you know any potential penalties for any law I may break this or that. It does get more complex when it's. A different country, if it's you know, overseas, they have their own way of going about things, their own legal system here, and there is international law. I, I, I'm very well aware of that. That uh, allows for interactions between business entities that are in two different countries here. And so, while it can be harder to prosecute if you're talking about, uh, you know, suing somebody overseas, think about the effects this could have. Right? You're talking about uh, Flash FX, BTC markets, because look, if if it is if, if it were to be found that NPPA is in the right, and even if Ripple were able to, because they're in a different country, keep going on using the pay ID name, think about the ramifications for the partners in Australia. That would make it pretty messy, right? So it's it's not surprising to me that we saw this headline, which is behind a paywall, which as a result, uh, pretty much nobody in the XRP community, to my knowledge, has learned any more. But here's the headline from LawyerLead.com. It came out today. Ripple Labs to rebrand in face of pay ID trademark lawsuit. So it looks like they're, if this is accurate, it looks like they're acquiescing. And I, I don't know why lawyerly.com, which is a reputable website, uh, I, I don't know why they'd write something like that if it were not to be true. Now, we haven't heard anything additional from Ripple that I'm aware of. I was, I was searching the Webernets. I personally haven't found anything, but undoubtedly, if they indeed are rebranding, they're no longer going to use the pay ID name. We're going to hear about it sooner than later. I don't know exactly what the timeline will look like, but it looks like payid.org, if this is true, would be gone, and we'll have something else. Functionally, it will still be the same thing. It's just the case that Ripple is going to have to go through some annoying rebranding here. But again, if this is the path of least resistance, maybe it just makes sense to do that. It is just a name in the end. It's a good name, uh, so I can see why NPPA would, would want that. But um, 
it would be, I don't know, it would just be hard for me to believe that just with the track record Ripple has, that they would knowingly do something uh, that that is a, a no-no legally. Like, I, to me, that would be astonishing, so I, I don't I suspect that's the case. But things are messy, right? Um, so so we'll, we'll just have to see how this all, all goes. But yeah, it looks like PID, although not going the way of the Dodo, the name is going the way of the Dodo, my favorite extinct avian creature. All right, into this piece now from you today. Soon most exchanges will withdraw crypto only to whitelisted wallets, says Block Tower Capital CIO. Chief Investment Officer at Block Tower Capital, Ari Paul, has taken to Twitter to share his conclusions as to what crypto regulation may look like in the near future, and he means one to two years, and how it is likely to shape the cryptocurrency sphere. He de- and his discussion involved exchanges, the privacy of transactions and balances, and more. Uh, Paul has posted a Twitter thread starting with the assumption that within a year or two, the majority of crypto exchanges will be regulated to such an extent that withdrawals will only be made to whitelisted wallets. Uh, He believes that in the near future, the regulation of the industry will lead to the existence of clean and legitimate coins versus, quote, everything else. Clean coins, he continues, will be transferred between regulated institutions and or between non-anonymous wallets. Well, I would say this, you know, if if you're a legit cryptocurrency exchange, you'd already want to do everything that you can to make sure that it's it's impossible, if not as close to impossible as possible to make, you know, to make, I love wording things in confusing ways, to make it very difficult, let's just say that, for uh, people to engage in illicit activities and launder money or anything along those lines, steal from people, and then just use exchanges to try and get it to wallets and then hide it from there, so on and so forth, maybe clean it with a, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How, how's this obvious word escaping me? Oh, privacy cryptocurrency. Yeah, the word privacy just escaped me. Good times. Good times. Moon Lambo, everybody. Moon Lambo. All right. Uh, so anyway, um, so, it, you know, you need thoughtful regulation in place. That's going to be coming down the pike regardless here. And it's not that there's no regulation whatsoever, but uh, he, he's. it seems to me he's just talking about making this regulation even more intense here. And so he wrote that, All top-tier crypto exchanges are racing to put in place processes to comply with financial regulation. Recently, he added, crypto exchanges were told that they were out of compliance, so he expects enforcement of the regulation to start soon. So nothing about this sounds wacky, and for all of us that are operating on legitimate cryptocurrency exchanges, which I would assume either all of us or the vast majority of us are, uh, I, I don't suppose that this is necessarily going to be anything game changing, but because uh, because look, we're already doing like we're already engaged in KYC, know your customer stuff, and so as, as far as like wallets that are approved, this or that, I can't imagine there has to be that much more that has to be done to make this all legal and safe. But uh, I guess it could change things a little bit in terms of withdrawing your XRP or other cryptocurrencies. But um, here, I think the piece continues here. However, his vision. As to whether the enforcement will be strict or minimal is vague so far, he recalls a sloppy regulation that was enforced to ICOs and says that when regulators lay their hands on exchanges, there still may be a lot of people who will easily be laundering crypto, sending it between uh, centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. And here's a quote. As with ICO enforcement, enforcement here may be minimal or sloppy. There may be plenty of people who can easily launder crypto in bulk from decentralized to centralized and vice versa. Or maybe enforcement will be strict. I don't know. Yeah, and so we don't know exactly what this is going to look like, but I'm all for, look, I'm just, I love the approach that Ripple has just in general when it has to do with anything crypto. They're the adults in the room. They want thoughtful regulation. Well, I'm on board with that too. I want it too on all aspects, all aspects of the asset class, blockchain, crypto, everything. And there are answers to this that are reasonable, and I suspect in most cases level heads will ultimately prevail, hopefully sooner than later. But that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambu!